Hello and welcome back to another episode. Today I want to share with you some of my drinking stories. Uh, first of all, it should be said, this cup only has coffee in it today. No alcohol in there at the moment. But you, you, you could, if you wanted to, suggest that perhaps, maybe, over the past 10 to 15 years, sometimes, occasionally, I have imbibed of alcohol and that might have led to moments of high adventure and moments of deep regret and these moments potentially occasionally haunt me to this day <laughs> now in all seriousness many of us have those have those stories from from drinking nights out this kind of thing which 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 become part of our um our, our, I suppose, personal mythos, and, and I'm no exception, and so I thought I'd share some of those today. Now, I was actually quite a late starter when it comes to alcohol. Lots of my friends have been drinking from the time they were, you know, 15, 12 even, I think, in one case. And uh, and so, you know, when they used to say, oh, you're you coming out, do you want to go, you know, go to the pub? I was never really that interested, actually. I was much more interested in, for example, playing Guild Wars or something like that. And my brother would be the one who would come in drunk much earlier than I started. He'd come in, you know, from uh, on GCSEs so when he was in uh, year 10 in high school. Um, I don't know what that'd be, 16, 17? He'd come home from nights out quite drunk. And, uh, and that, 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 was, that was his experience. His experience was much more typical of a, a teenager, I guess, in, in high school, in Britain at least. But, uh, but my experience started later. I, I didn't really start drinking until I was, I don't know, 17, 18, uh, in basically in A level, or AS level and A level at the end of high school. And even then, my drinking experiences didn't start in a normal way. I wasn't drinking cheap beer. I wasn't, um, I wasn't hanging around on the corner of a, you know, of a, of a park or something with my friends. Uh, drinking cider or whatever. I I remember specifically. I would go to to friends' houses and we'd have little gatherings. And these little gatherings would be yeah, actually quite intellectual. Maybe we'd watch a funky film and then you know share stories or something. And then someone would crack out uh, a bottle of wine or maybe some some cocktails or something. I mean, it sounds a bit a bit uh, what's the word a bit bourgeois, but it <laughs> but it wasn't. It was just this was just how you know we didn't want to be what we saw in some of our friends and some of our friends were, were just basically becoming lager louts and we, we didn't want to do that but i remember one night in particular i was up visiting my then girlfriend um and she used to live up on the on the hill on the mountain across the sort of valley opposite from my house uh, a two maybe three mile walk uh up up across and up the hill and uh we spent the night uh watching a movie with friends and she had cracked out the cocktails book and mixing set from her parents you know bar or whatever and she experimented with making something called a singapore sling and there were lots of sort of you know about the names of cocktails like sex on the beach and all that sort of nonsense but this singapore sling looks kind of interesting so she made one uh, and made one for me and her we both we both had one each except that she forgot to put in the mixer she forgot to put in the you know the tonic water or whatever it was that's meant to go into a singapore sling so basically we had a fairly sizable glass filled with uh, from memory um some sort of vodka i think some sort of definitely some sort of cherry liqueur and some other bits and bobs uh and and and, and, and as soon as i well frankly as soon as i drank it i knew it was there was something going on but as soon as i hit the cold welsh air to go home that night I was just trolleyed. I was absolutely wasted. <laughs> and I remember walking, walking sort of across the little road opposite her house, down this little sort of um, snicket way, this little sort of this walkway with trees very low, just sort of bumping into into the branches and going, I think I might be drunk. Is this is this what it feels like to be drunk? Sort of looking around in amazement, like a newborn vampire or something. Um, and then and then I had to walk all the way down through essentially a big housing estate area down the hill. Fairly, fairly steep hill, but I was going from lamppost to lamppost, zigzagging across the road. I wasn't staying on the pavement, I was just going over the... Okay, I'm saying, now this one, over here. <laughs> and I was absolutely wasted. And um, I, uh, I'm amazed I wasn't hit by a car. 
I'm astonished that the, that no police, you know, stopped and picked me up because I must have looked, you know, like a tramp, just just trashed. Um, but I remember specifically, in almost like a scientific way, going, "This, I, I must remember what this is like. This is, this is an interesting experience." <laughs> yeah, I have a less a less welcome drinking memory as well from that time where I went out with some friends to a bar on the high street in, in Prostatin um, and they they their big sort of their uh, was it their USP their unique unique selling point was having lots of European lager on on tap and not all European lager is very strong but some is so there was one that was like a strawberry lager that you're only allowed to have two glasses of and they'd stamp your hand you know to make sure that, that you only had two because it was very strong but also very tasty so people wanted to you know wanted to drink it because it was it tasted nice uh, but I had that and I had a few others and clearly I again I drank a lot of alcohol but also actually it had been lots of lovely flavors as well so i wasn't i wasn't feeling it i was just going oh this is really nice and come the end of the evening again come that that that, that time of the evening when the cold air hits you and 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 you find yourself trying to get home i just i don't remember how i got home but i did somehow this was further away than than my ex-girlfriend's house um but i remember this i remember sitting down in the living room on the chair um, facing the couch where my mum was, uh, she she you know, she she was reading a book or something. And my brother was giggling, giggling like no one's business. Because normally, as I say, it would have been him coming home hammered. Uh, and normally, when we got home, mum was possibly in bed already or something like that, you know. So she was like, "Do you want do you want some water? Will that help? Here's some water." And no, that was a terrible idea. Because as soon as the water, this cold water, hit my stomach. I just I was just sick I was sick everywhere uh, all over the, uh, the 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 floor the chair um, I remember being sick on on a board game that I really liked that was next to the chair and I was like oh no oh trying to clean it up of course if you, you know if you're that if you're that drunk you can't you know you're, you're no good at cleaning uh, so I was just sort of smooching the sick around instead of actually cleaning it up it was ugh, grim um, but thankfully in that instance, mum kind of recognised that she did the wrong thing. She shouldn't have just given me a pint of water to drink. She should have just sent me off to bed with a little sip of water to try and avoid a hangover. But so that, those are the two my two high school memories of drinking. And again, really in university, I didn't drink that much. But when I did drink at university, it was often to excess without really meaning to. So I remember with, within the first week of, of being at uni, everyone was just going nuts you know the first week of uni nothing really matters in terms of work freshers week you know people are just going crazy so in the 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 uh the halls where i was living in that first year um it was just it was pandemonium and i remember coming out of my room going what's going on you know people running around drinking you know toilet roll being thrown around all that sort of basically kids thinking we're adults finally we can do what we want but then behaving like like shits and uh, and I found myself wandering along I hadn't really made any friends yet it's the sort of thing you know is there a party what's happening and someone's going no here have this and it was a it was a, a, a weird little green bottle I was like what is this bottle I'd never seen a bottle like this before and it had a white cap on it and it was in fact uh, I think a 70 centiliter bottle of gin and this, this gin bottle was mostly full, it was like two thirds full. And I'd never had gin before, I didn't know, like I said, I didn't know what this was. So I was like, okay, well, I've drunk before, I know what drinking's like. Have a little sip. And for some reason now, if I did that now, I would really feel like, ugh, I need to, I need to put this in something. You know, it's more civilised, first of all, to drink it with a mixer, maybe some ice or something. Secondly, it just, it's just, you know, this would have been throat stripper. But for some reason, my constitution was such that it was strong enough just to go, hmm, interesting. And I proceeded to drink the whole bottle. And before I knew it, I was incandescently drunk. I was just floating, glistening. The world was sort of this sort of this uh, iridescent, beautiful place. And uh, and that's that's a good thing as much as I tend to be a happy drunk. 
there, I, had, I do have a story when I when I wasn't a happy drink, and I'll come to that. But I tend to be quite a happy drink, so I was like la la la. And there's this video that someone who became a friend of mine uh, filmed of me that night, and thankfully he's destroyed the footage, so <laughs> it, it's never going to come to light. There was a video out there, though, or was for a while, sorry, in his possession, of of me sat on the floor in the corner with underpants over my head, so, some ones underpants, I don't know who they were, uh, basically looking a little bit like Spider-Man. Um, you're saying, yeah, I'm Spider-Man. And then exclaiming proudly that I I could I can drive better than anyone else in the world. <laughs> I didn't have my driver's license at that point. I wouldn't actually pass my driver's license. Also, I wouldn't I wouldn't try for my driver's license until I was like 26 or something. So I didn't have much. I couldn't drive, but that didn't stop me from claiming to be the best driver in the world. And then I fell asleep underneath a radiator, going, "This would be nice and warm." <laughs> the radiator wasn't on and uh, and woke up having just been snoring apparently all night mo or most of the night around about 4 a.m with people watching the exorcist oh uh, this was in like a common room or something i was just underneath the radiator watching the exorcist and then going oh finally he's awake we, <laughs> we weren't sure if you were going to wake up <laughs> And that was that was kind of my introduction to university um, life. And then really from then on, I didn't really excessively drink. There were a couple of nights when I did get quite drunk, but I didn't. I, it wasn't a regular thing because I was focusing on my studies. Thankfully, uh, I wasn't no, one of those people who just goes down completely the wrong path in uni. Uh, but I do remember the, there was a night when I got, I was very upset about something. Uh, I don't know what what I was upset about. No idea. But I remember I remember buying a bottle of wine. No, two bottles of wine. I think I was going to take one of them home with me. But I ended up drinking basically out of a bottle of wine outside Durham Cathedral. And I got so upset and angry about something that I threw the spare bottle at the building. There's still actually a red wine stain on Durham Cathedral today. And that's that's my fault. Um, but I have no idea what, what why I was so... Something was bothering me. Something clearly would have, had, had upset me. Or maybe a bit a bit irritated but yeah so so you know but uh, basically i didn't really drink much much in uni um I, I did drink a bit more though towards the end because eventually there was a there was a point when there's not much else to do other than make um make strange film projects with your friends and, and go out drinking but yeah but really i i really fell into my stride when it comes to alcohol uh, when i moved to york and uh, when I, I got a job working as an archaeologist and Viking at the York Archaeological Trust, working, for example, in the York Viking Centre and then a couple of other museums around the city as well. And, uh, and, and working with those guys where basically every day we're dressing up as Vikings, we're, we're sort of living a, a, I don't know, a very, a very comfortable lifestyle where there's, there's hundreds of pubs in York the alcohol's quite cheap. There's there's a Sam Smith's um, pubs, in fact, which um, Sam Smith's is still actually my favourite uh, beer company. I have their, one of their pint glasses here. Sam Smith's, where a pint is like one pound fifty. Even the Sam Smith's pubs in London, I think the Cheshire Cheese, it's called. Uh, the pints are very in, inexpensive. So, you know, alcohol was free flowing. There was this sort of pseudo archaeologist Viking kind of vibe going on. And so we, yeah, we, we would regularly drink uh, quite a lot. Uh, Mead, in particular, would be drunk. Um, me and my friends had this sort of, this ritual where if we all had the same day off in the week or days off in the week, we'd go out the night before to Morrison's, a supermarket just outside York City Centre, buy a bottle of mead each, and then drink out of horn cups all night. That was quite pleasant. Quite Again, quite a pleasant way to pass the time to, to um, uh, to have interesting conversations. I remember watching with some of my uh, one, well, two guys in particular, back at one of their flats. Uh, I remember watching a video of someone like a home. What was it called? Cyst removal. And it's just the noise this guy made as someone was like popping something on his neck. It's yeah, oh, that 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 was that was burned onto my brain without a doubt. Um, but uh, there was there was there was one night in particular. 
when I was working as a Viking, that that was a, a, a big, a big night. It was probably actually the biggest. Um, and that's the night that we were asked to help to promote a new beer from the York Brewing Company um, called Nord Nordic Fury. And it was coming out around about the same time as the Jorvik Viking Festival. So there was lots of, lots of sort of, you know, testosterone bravado in the city. Lots of guys dressed up as Vikings walking around. And we, <clears throat> um, as, as some of the, 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 you know, the Vikings attached to the museum, were asked if we would go to the pub and spend the night drinking uh, and allowing people to take photos of us while we're drinking in Viking costume. Of course, <laughs> of course we said yes. And it was only really thankfully the first pub that, that the photo shoot took place in because we went to a few different York Brewery pubs because basically we were given a pass. They said, tonight, here you go, this pass, wherever you go, as so long as it's one of our pubs, you can just drink as much as you want. And we're like, fine. So um, yeah, in the first pub, lots of sort of, you know, um, posing, lots of sort of, yay, cheers, Nordic Fury. Uh, the rest of the evening then became a bit of a blur because it was actually quite a strong beer, Nordic Fury. Uh, but also the same brewers had another beer called, uh, which that they still do have a beer called Centurion, which is a which is a very strong beer. It, it, it's um, I think even the description is basically it'll kick your ass, you know. And uh, and we all moved on to Centurion. It's quite a dark beer as well. And I remember being in a pub just around the corner from where I used to live. And we're all we're all still drinking. We're all still dressed in our Viking gear. In York, people kind of get used to seeing you occasionally, seeing people you know wandering around with with Viking stuff on. So that was quite normal. But something just clicked in my head, and it's kind of hard to set, to explain. But there's like a little portion of my brain that was still sober and just went. Now, if you don't go home immediately you could die <laughs> you know a bit like get your ass to Mars get your ass home and I was like okay I must go home and I just left and apparently the the, the rest of the guys the rest of the party because it was guys and girls actually the rest of the group they're all like where's he gone where's he? I, oh well but obviously they're all drunk as well so they didn't worry about it for too long uh, which is actually a bit worrying. I could have just wandered into the into the river, but anyway, I went home, and it was just around the corner, and I got. To, I was at, at that point. I was living a little in a one room flat in a converted warehouse in York, uh, and a young professionals shared accommodation. And uh, um, I went to open the door, and um, I realised that I'd forgotten my keys. And I was like, oh, so I started ringing the doorbell of this one guy, one of my neighbours, who I thought might be up. And he did come to the door and he goes, hello, Mark, uh, are you okay? And I'm like, I'm very drunk. I need to come, come in, please. And he goes, okay. He goes, you do realize that your keys are just there. And basically what I'd done is I'd tried my keys, dropped them at my feet and then forgotten that I had my keys. <laughs> that's how, that's how drunk I was. And I went, oh yeah, and <laughs> picked them up, went in, sat down in like the, in the group living room, uh, and then unfortunately I was promptly sick. Now I hate being sick, I really do hate being sick. Uh, and I really also hate the idea of other people having to clean up my sick. But this guy was amazing, he, he did. He, he actually helped to clean it up, even though I was again trying, but when you're drunk you're useless at cleaning up sick. So he just goes, you just go to bed, I'll, do, I'll sort this out. And I was like, oh thank you Ma, thank you. Made my way upstairs, it was like two or three flights of steps. And then, everything's a blank no idea what happened next the next morning i woke up to, to see a, a rainbow shape at least the rainbow on my wall where clearly I, I had projectile vomited in the night all over the wall and thankfully my room at the time had um had a, a little sink in it so clearly i'd done some i'd done some drunken cleanup overnight i'm taking like the bedding off the, off the bed and all that sort of stuff but I couldn't remember any of it, and I still can't remember any of that. So that's not, not exactly dignified, not a wonderful story. And then I went and asked my neighbor when I was sober, is everything okay? I didn't, you know, nothing. And he goes, everything's fine, don't worry. And I say he was amazing. Uh, but needless to say, I didn't make it into work the next day. It was a work day the next day, and I wasn't the only one who was uh, incapacitated. <laughs> and um, I remember 
Uh, I was sitting next to a ticket booth that was just outside the Orvik Centre, talking to one of my colleagues, having just basically said to management, I can't come in today, I'm just... <laughs> I'm just ruined. Um, just talking to them, and I just had to then just go just a second and just pull out these sort of vomit in a um, in a flower pot behind them, and then set back up again. And sort of, I think I better go. <laughs> and I, yeah. So that wasn't. That's not great. Not. Uh, not great. Um, but it could be worse. In so much as there was one night in York when when my brother, because because for a while we were both living in the, in York at the same time, although actually we saw quite little of each other, we were living very separate lives, but there was one night just before my stag do, uh, when my brother insisted that we all go out on like a pre-stag drinking night, and he he, get, he plied me with all sorts of strong and vicious alcohols like absinthe and other things, and it, it, it clearly the chemistry of that just made me immensely angry. Uh, and I do remember, I, and this is this is one of the things that I really, I kind of regret. I really regret that whenever I think of my stag do, which was lovely, friends and and colleagues, all spending the night in a in a in a reconstructed Viking village just outside of York. That was fantastic. Whenever I think of that, I also think of the night before, um, when I I just remember I remember screaming at people and screaming at, at friends even because I was just so drunk and so and frankly that i think it was that mixture of alcohol that paul had given me that just made me so it so uncharacteristically angry uh i can say i'm not normally an angry drunk i'm normally quite happy and normally quite sleepy so you know all, not all of these stories are are amusing or have that sort of edge to it some of it can be quite genuinely quite i you know, really do regret i definitely regret that night um but there's one final story that I'd like to share from my time in York when we'd just completed our first Jorvik Viking Festival and this was this was the year before the Nordic Fury launch. This was my first Viking Festival. And uh, the staff and the Vikings and the museum members and the archaeologists, everyone was getting together in a pub and uh, we were all drinking quite heavily. The management was there and I just had this moment where I just went... I will give a speech. <laughs> and so I stood up and I said, let, let us let us all let us all consider what we have achieved here. Ah. You, you people, the you archaeologists and the museum management, you find the things and present the things, and then we 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 talk about the things to the public. And then we all learn about Jorvik and the Vikings in York. This has been a great success. Cheers! <laughs> and I, I do remember the sort of the you <laughs> kind of like pointing like at, at my head manager. You! Apparently she loved it. Apparently everyone loved it. But I, I remember sitting down and someone was whispering in my ears going, You do realise you've completely ruined your career. Uh, with your archaeological trust, you're, you're never going to get anywhere now. <laughs> and that wasn't that wasn't the case, not really. I mean, there were there were uh, <clears throat> there were a great many people who did much worse than me um, while while inebriated. So um, so I'm sure that wasn't the case. But it was quite amusing. And then at the sort of the work awards do once a year, they have this thing where they give out uh, you know best employee and all that sort of nonsense. Um, I got a, a special award made just for me, uh, and it's the Inebriated Waffly Nonsense Award. Uh, in fact, actually, I, ha I have it. Hang on a sec. So, <laughs> so here we go. They made this little award uh, with a stick-on beard and everything, because I very much uh, have kept the beard uh, from my time working as a Viking. And uh, yeah, a little plaque: the Inebriated Waffly Nonsense Award, Mark Astles. I'm, I'm quite proud of that. I literally have got an award for my drinking. <laughs> There's a little photo just over there on the wall actually of me, of me receiving this thing. And I, I'm even holding the same uh, sort of port glass in that photo as this chap is holding on the award. So, so yeah, and uh, you know, a nice way to end this, uh, this batch of drinking stories. I have literally, I'm, I'm an award winning drinker <laughs> and waffler. Uh, oh, cool. 
cameo engraving Holgate Road. It's cool. So they, yeah, they, they they literally made had this made professionally made for me uh, as a, as an award winning drinker. I like it. Uh, so there you go, guys. Um, some of my drinking stories, and hopefully, in fact, not even hopefully, I know fine well I won't be alone in having a range of stories to tell about uh, alcohol and nights out and potentially even the regrets that follow. Uh, please do comment below if you have any interesting stories to share, uh, but hopefully you found my stories entertaining at the very least. As ever, until next time, do take care. Bye-bye.